skin. So sometimes it's the glass, sometimes it's the fitting, sometimes it's the installation, sometimes it's just bad luck. Um, so it, it, it's the one thing we've we've found out in tracking this is that every building uh, has its own DNA, and while it gets reported as falling glass, the the, the, the actual cause of the, the incident differs radically. Sometimes even in the same building, there's dimensions of the panes of glass that were being spanned. In another scenario, it was the way they were being mounted on the sides of the building, and, 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 and they were being engineered to accommodate pressure from the inside out, not from the outside in. Uh, and then and then we find out in some cases that they used um, uh, um, caulking, which was interior caulking, not exterior caulking. It was simply a building trees mix-up. So each building has its own DNA, and while the issue is reported as falling glass, what caused the glass to fall is different. Sometimes it's the fitting, sometimes it's the casting of the glass, sometimes it's the method of installation. So it, it's not the same even though uh, it, it sometimes aff uh, affects uh, the same building or similar buildings. Is there generally speaking enough oversight though of materials, of construction practices, and maintenance? Think, you know, as, as someone whose, whose family has been in, engaged in, in the building trades uh, for a long time, um, in, through architecture. I don't think you'll find a city and, and a group of architects more um, sensitive to the issues. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's their reputations of the architects and of the builders um, rely on, on, on buildings being good, strong buildings. But, but there's always the fear, and the, fact, and the fear has been present since, since this last boom sort of pronounced itself in the city, that, that um, we are building a lot of buildings of a generation. Uh, we don't know how long uh, their building skins or their building infrastructure will last. In 25 years' time, we may be seeing a generation of buildings um, go through um, premature aging in, in a way that, 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 is, that is kind of scary. We're, we're, we're consciously, consciously and constantly evaluating that, and it scares us because if, if, if you think fixing uh, you know, a pane of glass in the 50th floor is tough, try replacing the skin of a 50-story building. And so um, I know the profession is engaged in it. I know that the engineers and, and that the building, uh, the building manufacturing groups that are doing the components are all looking at this, but it's, 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 a, it's a dilemma. But it's, it's, as I said, falling glass is, is the symptom. The cause is often radically different from building to building, even on the same floor of the same building. But there was change in the wake of all these incidents, there was the province made changes to the building code. Is, the, is there more? Not big ones. Not big ones, but there were, but there were some changes. I I, that's, that's a bit of an overstatement, but go on. What's your point? There were not, did the province not make changes to the building code in the wake of there was, there was not, I wouldn't say the building code. I think that the inspection standards changed. But again, um, the, 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 the last time the province acted, it was following the determination that the way that, and the size of the span of the glass was causing a problem. And, and what was happening was that the imperfections multiplied as you cast the glass larger and larger. And, and, and they, they just kind of lined up in such a way that it almost became a perforated sort of, you know, like a, like a postage stamp, a set of postage stamps where, where the, the imperfections lined up in such a way that the, that the, fail, that the glass broke more easily. That was, that was the last major finding that was pushed onto the province, um, but that was found to be a manufacturing defect that had to do with one of the, one of the, the, the metallic oxides that they put in the glass and the way so it So what's the, city, what's the city's role in this, to come in after? It's, the, it's, it's actually not a city responsibility. I mean, at, we, we, at all? Well, we do the inspection, but the, the, the standards and the codes to which these buildings are being built are provincial standards and codes. And so if there's going to be a, if, if, if there's a systemic problem to what's going on, or if there is a building science which is which meets code, but the code is, is obviously lax, the province is going to have to do the study on this because the, the glass doesn't just fall in tall buildings. The glass also fails in small buildings. You just don't hear about it. You know, it doesn't close streets because when it falls on someone's front porch, um, you know, a glass company's called and it's fixed. Um, these these issues have are, are tied to the use of glass and how glass is being used in architecture. There's no there's no there's no debate about that. But as I said, the, the DNA of each one of these failures is so radically different that it's puzzling. Sometimes on the very same floor, you'll lose two pieces of glass and they're lost for very different reasons. So changing the building code for, to to address one issue doesn't stop the other one from happening. So do you think council would be open to expanding the more uh, the exhibition <laughs> place board starts <laughs> from panes of glass to, 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 to the pane of grass. Look, I, I think I think that uh, we are dealing with a proposal here from, from a major entity in the city, which which is looking to expand sports facilities. Um, I, I think we're, we're open to looking at. It. We need to understand the financing of it. Uh, we need to understand what that might bring in terms of the events and, and the impact that might have on, on, on programming at, at the exhibition place. Um, while everyone's focused on, on, on football and, and soccer and, and the synergies that might uh, you know, 
arrive at that game field courtesy of Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment. Um, what I hear, what I've been working towards, what I'm focused on is, is, is cricket. And no one's talking about that, but we're, we're looking to promote a, a national cricket stadium. And what's interesting, if you talk to Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment, because of the connection to Bell and the sports TV networks, uh, it's an emerging market in this, in this, this part of the world. We have a huge opportunity here, not really to create the stadium so much, although it would be full of people, lots of friends of mine would go. I'd certainly attend. But it's, it's really a television studio back in the South Asia. So there's, there's some real opportunities here to expand our, our, our sports capacity. I think we need to be cognizant of the fact, though, that, that if you build lots and lots of sports facilities, you end up with, with lots and lots of dead zones in the city because they're not activated all the time. It's great that the Sky Dome's activated, but when it loses the tenant, it means the Sky Dome goes dark in more days of the year. And that has an impact on the local neighborhood. So, so it's not just a question of, of expanding sports facilities, which I think we all understand the opportunity. Uh, we need to see the financing, but we also need to understand it as an urban planning issue. Uh, and, and so um, I'm not close to it. Uh, I've had some good conversations with Maple Leaf Sports Entertainment about the proposal. Uh, they, they operate the BIA in the board, and, and there's a neighboring council that came to see me. <coughs> but it's only one of several opportunities to expand sports capacity. What, what well, sorry, do you, want to turn, do you want to turn BMO Field into a national cricket no, pitch? It's, 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 or is it a different cricket's, space? Cricket's round and, and, and it's square. It doesn't work. Okay, so, so, so where would you put that? I don't know. We're looking at several different opportunities. But it, it's one of the challenges we have is that it's a limited amount of green space. A limited amount of flat yeah. space in the downtown core. So the, the port is an opportunity. There's, there's, uh, we'll be looking at Coronation Park as a possibility. Uh, we'll be looking at the sites on, on Ontario Parks as well. We think that there's, there's a real opportunity here. It's, it's a huge, fast growing sport. Uh, and the other side of it is that we have a real shortage of recreational capacity in the city. And, and cricket is one of those sports. That, that is not so hard on the turf that you can't allow I don't know, everyday players like myself to play on the grass in between the national You want it downtown? Downtown is where the transit is. You know, uh, American cities went through a generation of putting them on the suburbs that uh, were sort of highway interchanges, and uh, what we find there is that you end up having to build a transit infrastructure to serve four or five gates a year. Uh, so having been to, to facilities that are that are way out of the downtown core, they don't do much for anybody way out there. What kind of percentage would you be looking for? You know, it, 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 it gets expressed sometimes as as just backing loans, which is which is to, to to um, provide securities where banks might not uh, understand the business opportunity. Sometimes it's a cash donation. Sometimes it's it's a renegotiation of existing agreements. So, what I know is that is that is that negotiations are underway to figure out what the financial piece should be. I, you know, I think that when we have a shortage of uh, funds for public housing, it's hard to talk about financing uh, a new home for, for professional sports franchises. But at the same time, uh, the economic strength of the city. Um, gives us a capacity to, to do financing models that, that perhaps the private sector isn't capable of doing because the business model is not securable um, and because we own the asset, we have a responsibility to it. So we'll look at the deals. That so you'll be, look, you be looking for a firm capital commitment? No, it, it, it's, it's not. I, I don't think it's about uh, cash on the table or firm capital commitment. I think it's, it's a looking at a financing arrangement that, that limits exposure to the city and certainly doesn't pr prohibit us from fixing public housing, which is the priority, or building transit, which is also an issue. Just to follow up on something, you're talking about different things affect the windows. In, in 2012, at the request of the city, they added the amendment around glass balconies and the type of glass that could have been used. Sh should they have gone farther? There should, should there should there be more things added to the to the building code because there's a new kind of it needs building be, being bought. Being it, it needs to be driven from evidence, and, and and some of the things that are failing have been used in tall buildings for you know a lot longer than five or six years. So it, it's you need to establish a pattern. You need to address the issues that are raised within a pattern, and then you need to act. And, and, and if there's a clear pattern, then there's a clear need to act. But but nine times out of ten, when you find what needs to be fixed. You've got to go to Queen's Park. The building code and, 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 uh, and, and a lot of the standards are provincially instituted, not locally instituted. We can make recommendations, but if Queen's Park does not act, they don't act. 3,000 employees of the Toronto Police earn $100,000 or more. Does that sound reasonable to you? That's what happens when Rob Ford hands out you know, double digit wage hikes. I mean, when, when that contract was handed out by the so called fiscal conservative mayor, he handled, he handed out the richest contract in the history of policing. Uh, without even going to, to, to arbitration or negotiating, he just he just bent over and gave them what they want. Um, it's 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 I mean, that's not the best way to say. It. But but you know I mean he literally capitulated. He, he gave them the richest contract that has ever been handed out in the history of the, of, of, of the city. So when you do that, uh, people who are earning eighty ninety thousand dollars suddenly earning a 
over $100,000 very quickly and, and within the life of the contract. We, we, we told everyone that's what happened when it happened, but everyone was, was, was uh, so you know, uh, enamored by his reputation as fighting the gravy train, they didn't realize that he'd put every police officer in the city on that gravy train and driven us straight through police headquarters and straight through our budget process. It is an extraordinarily expensive contract that the Fords have signed. You can, you can begin to wonder why they might be trying to favor with the rank and file. They certainly like playing that game politically. Uh, and they have certainly put their money on, 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 on one side of the agenda there, the rank and file. And, and you know, and, and I don't begrudge the cops one one I owe. I mean, their, their association is there to negotiate in the interest of their, of their rank and file. Um, Rob Ford gave them everything he could and gave, gave away so much money. We are have no capacity to actually improve policing in the city. In fact, we're, we've, been, we've been capping the number of officers because they won't be able to pay them. This is the kind of ridiculous behavior that passes for Roth Ford's common sense. So how do you read that in now? You can't. That's the problem. That, that, that was not what we tried to explain to them. The minute you, you, you drive a contract of this value into the police service, it never disappears. In fact, what it does, and we heard from all of our colleagues across the province, is it drives all of the other essential service agreements out. In fact, it's probably going to impact on the TTC. I mean, he pretends to, to save money you know, when he talks out loud, but when he acts, he spends money. And he spends money in such a way that actually limits our capacity to deliver the other thing he promises to deliver, which is customer service. It takes longer to get a police officer now because we don't have as many for a growing city because we're paying them too much. And it's not the police association's fault. We have a mayor who is afraid of him and caved in in contract negotiations and then boasted that he was the best friend of the, to, to, to the police office. You know, he, he, he may be a very good friend of the police association, he has not been a very good friend of taxpayers, and as a result, not only do we get, we get less policing, it costs us more. It's ridiculous, but that's Ralph Ford's math, and it's terrible math, that's why he's a terrible mayor. What do you, what do you make of uh, the CJ pack event last night when Ford showed up, completely stole the thunder from everybody, lineups, lineups around the room to take pictures? Well, People stopped everything. This is a guy who was reportedly wasted at last year's event. People were lining up to take pictures of him. They left Toy, they left Stints, they left Saknaki, they left Chow. Uh, Look, he's a spectacle. You know, pe people don't take pictures of planes that land. They take pictures of planes that crash. You guys don't. You guys don't. You guys don't go to, 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 to bed every night having reported on all the people that didn't get murdered. Talk about the people whose lives ended in tragedy. Nothing succeeds like failure. This guy is the biggest failure we've ever had as a mayor. So, are people taking their picture with him? Sure. You know, I remember if, if half the people got the bobbleheads were getting them so they could laugh at them when they got home. But he takes that as person as, 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 as some sort of you know popularity. You guys say, look at the, look at the amazing. It, it, when you guys point your cameras some way, people don't keep jumping. You know, when you're doing a live hit and people are jumping behind you. And then you switch your location, and people start jumping behind you again. It's not because you're popular; it's because they want the picture. Right? So, so you know, put it in perspective. And this, this guy is a colossal failure, worst mayor we've ever had. It, it, it's, it's about to be—you know—you've you, you, got a limited time offered in terms of getting a picture with the guy. He's only around for a few more months, so he shows up at an event, and people are—you know—taking pictures. Big deal. It doesn't impress me. It doesn't, and, 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 and it certainly isn't going to translate into votes. Well, I think that's just. Well, the words that are wrong. I think he thinks that there's he's hedging his bet that that might translate he in a vote. Drunk on his on his on, on, on his notoriety, you know, which is the first time he's been drunk on something that's legal. Um, but it, but it's, it's it's you know, but but look at it. it he's not anybody that's fooled by this. Um, is it, probably fooled by this same polls that say that the people like his agenda. I can tell you those very same polls say they don't like him. You know, and, and he thinks he is his agenda. He thinks his agenda is him. And, and, and he may be wrapped up and delusional in that, in that environment. That's fine. What I can tell you is that every poll I've seen shows him in third, fourth, or fifth place, depending on how many people you put on, 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 the, on the ballot. And every indication I have is that, well, his popularity uh, to, to have a picture taken with him is big. No one, not one of those people would ever ask him to babysit their kids. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, is there a public spectacle? Bloody right there is. We're all living through it. Is is there a, 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 a firm understanding that, that his day is done? Um, there are a few people who still think he has life in those legs, but I can tell you it's time to go over his finish. Some would say, though, he's become really good at when you put the lens on him, he puts the mirror up and puts it back. And then, and then hey, we all have problems. God forbid. You know, if I put the, the put mirror up to him, I, the last thing you want to see is me. Okay, it, it's, it's, it's nothing succeeds like failure. And, and he's a spectacle. And, and, and if people confuse um, his notoriety with, with political currency, um, 
let me tell you, he's bankrupt. It's over. It's done. And, and, and do people want to take a picture with him? Sure. You know, you take a picture with Rob Ford, you send it out there, you might become famous too. I mean, it's 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 no different than taking a picture with, with Pamela Anderson or Justin Bieber, which were apparently were two of his colleagues on the, the streets of New Orleans last week. They're not going to win the mayor's race either. <laughs> Thank you.